Journaling. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? But it's something that I get so many questions about from people on where to start and just how to do it. So I thought I'd make this video to just give a few tips on where to get started with journaling and why I feel like it's so important. There are so many tools that we use or we can use to help us on our self-development journey and within our spiritual practice. But of all the practices I recommend, one of the most effective tools I found is journaling. It's genuinely one of the tools that will help you get to know your true self and understand your emotions and develop your inner growth and help you step into your authentic self more than anything else will. When we talk about doing the work, there are so many tools that contribute to it, like meditation, breath work, so many things that can help us. But when we fall off the wagon from any of those things, journaling is the thing that can bring us back. When we have a true understanding of our emotions, we can manage them more effectively and use them to our advantage. This is emotional intelligence and journaling helps us to arrive at this place, this place of true emotional intelligence, having an understanding of our emotions and being able to access the full spectrum of human emotions, which we want because we're human. We need to feel it all. So I put together some tips to help you get started or to help you get back into your journaling practice. Number one is journal for at least 20 minutes a day. I know it sounds like a lot, but when you start, your ego self will be trying to lead the way by trying to stop your subconscious mind from coming through. And your subconscious mind is where all that information that you really need to access is stored. So when you get past the 12, 13 minute mark, that's where your subconscious will start coming through. That's where you'll start accessing the stuff that really needs to be accessed much more than just kind of what you had for dinner last night. We've got to push ourselves past that point, past the point where the ego is really trying to stop us. The ego doing that is a protective mechanism. The ego is trying to protect you because it thinks if you access that emotion, it might be too hard for you. But it's when we access those emotions and when we push ourselves to that hard, past that discomfort, that we really start the growth process. Number two is just start writing. If you really don't know what to journal about, where to start, just start writing. Write about what you had for dinner because that might lead to the argument you had with your partner over dinner, which will lead to a whole range of other stuff. Once you start writing, your subconscious mind will start coming through and you'll really be able to start accessing the emotions that need to come out. So just start writing, just take those first steps. Number three is cry into your journal. This is honestly one of my favorite tools that I use with my clients. If you're going through a challenging time, make the most of your crying by accessing the emotions behind the crying. Cry while you're journaling. You'll be really surprised at what comes out and what you subsequently learn about yourself. And I mean that, just let the tears drop onto the page. When you read back what you've written while you were crying in months or years to come, it will really help you see how much emotion you've accessed and how far you've come. Number four, be brutally honest. Give yourself the permission to be honest, brutally honest. Be as angry and bitchy and petty as you need to be. This is no dear diary Judy Bloom and Frank type of thing. No one is coming back to read this diary, okay? If you wanna write a diary that someone finds one day, do that separately. This is for you alone. This is not gonna be made into a movie. This is for you to be able to access your emotions, to tap more deeply into your authentic self. And in order to do that, you have to be as honest and brutal as you possibly can be. Number five, be intuitively guided. If you try to do this from a place of strategy and logic, it just won't work as well. Let this be a completely intuitive process. That feminine energy of intuition that's what needs to come through here in order for this to work. So be intuitively guided. Number six, 100 days of journaling. Begin by committing to 100 days of journaling for 20 minutes a day. You'll be really surprised by how you feel at the end of 100 days. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also to follow and subscribe to my podcast, Reconditioned with Lauren Vacneen.